Do you have a drill press? Maybe with a laser feature where the laser doesn't work? Let me show you something that might fix that. This video definitely took a turn, so make sure to stay till the end to see everything I learned along the way. A lot of times these laser additions are actually battery powered. So you can see here, get nothing, no response. But if you push up, there's a little notch. And you can see we have some very rusty, crusty batteries. So we'll get those out. A little tape on the end of a screwdriver just to help pull those out. See the elite electrolyte. You can see we have some old battery acid corrosion on those uh, terminals. So I'm gonna get a brush, see that brush brush just give that a quick clean not perfect but definitely a lot better let's put some new batteries in there and see if we get our laser back because new batteries didn't fix the laser my next guess was it was a bad switch the wires and switch terminals were bought, soldered together and covered by heat shrink, so I needed to remove the wires completely to access the switch terminals so that I could actually test the switch. Setting the multimeter to continuity, I wanted to see if there was connectivity between the two terminals when the switch was flipped on. The beep would indicate if there was indeed a connection. And it looks like it's a bad switch based on the lack of continuity. Fortunately, switches usually have tabs on the sides that help seat them in place. So we can just remove this old bad switch from this cover and insert a new one. Googling the make and model of my drill press led me to the manufacturer's website where I was able to find the manual and the parts list. I was able to find the exact part number for the switch but unfortunately I didn't find many options to purchase the exact one. So I decided to take measurements of the old switch as well as the switch housing to see if I could find something that I could make fit into the space I had. I tried everything looking at different options and this is the closest thing I could find. The most important thing being the actual height because we only have this much go off of and you can see it's this old switch kind of maxes out the height we can go a little bit wider but the height really constricts us so here's something that will fit matches the spec and before we install a bad part I always like to verify that it is functional get our meter continuity so we'll put those on the two prongs so good we turn it off you can see very good step one was to outline the new switch onto the housing paying close attention to make sure the outline wasn't bigger than the flange or the switch wouldn't sit atop the housing i started with the dremel but realized its cuts were too big so i switched over to an exacto knife to make more precise and fine-tuned cuts periodically checking with the new switch to see what alterations still needed to be made and also to ensure I didn't overshoot and make the hole too big so that the switch would not sit properly. This next demonstration is purely educational. To further show you that the switch was the issue, we put our batteries in and, a and realize that a switch purely is just a drawbridge connecting two electrical connectors. Let me show you what happens when I put these two wires together. You can see our laser is functional. 
since the camera won't get a good shot of what I'm doing when I solder on the wires to the new switch, given it's a tight space. I'm going to demonstrate here with a bigger wire. So the first step is to get a clean section of wire. So I just like to get a dedicated pair of cutters. The wire cutters usually, and like wire strippers, the first I don't find to be very good, but that's just me. So get a nice clean section. And then if you look on the insulation of your wire, you should see a gauge somewhere. So this is 18 gauge wire. So if we get our strippers and go to the 18 gauge and then put our wire in there, give it a little bit of room so we can uh, actually cut or have some room to work with. So I like to do just a, maybe a little bit like that and then push down, work back and forth and then pull. You know, make sure nothing is nicked. See, this is a nice, clean section of stranded wire. And I like to go back and just make it look nice. Now, it might seem intimidating, but the soldering is pretty straightforward. A few things you need when soldering. Besides a soldering iron or a soldering pen, which I actually I feel like would work better, especially in a scenario like this, but this is all I have to work with. And then you need some flux and some solder. What I like to do is called tinning the wires. So we add some flux so you can get a little brush and apply some. Honestly, I just stick some on. That <clears throat> flux is your best friend when you solder. And then what we want to do is apply heat on one end and then put the solder on the other end so that solder will follow the heat and transfer all over. You can put a little bit of solder on the tip and then just hold that against there and have it travel through. But if you just put the solder, you know, if you tried to heat the solder onto the wire like that, that would just be a, a cold solder joint and it would not be a good solder joint. So uh, let's see if I can zoom in a little bit more. So there's our wire with some flux. And then I'm just gonna add some heat. You'll see that the flux will start to melt. And once it starts to bubble like that, I put my uh, solder. Something like that. And feed it in. And that's what it should look like. You can see how shiny it is now. Um, really good practice is not to have the solder go all the way up underneath the insulation because that might actually cause, because uh, obviously the solder hardens and then if it, you know, you try and move that wire, it will actually break the insulation. So just, you know, that's like really good soldering technique, but you know, whatever. This is not a soldering how-to video. This is just a, a simple, uh, basic switch repair. So now that the wire is tinned, that makes it that much easier to sort of work with. And so what my plan is, this is an over exaggeration. I would put some heat shrink tubing over this wire because then the next step is to solder. This is the old switch because now we'll solder the wire onto the new switch. I mean, you could do this. You could just, you know, have it sit on one terminal like this and then solder and flux, you know, stick it right there. Obviously this wire is a little bit too long, but what I would recommend a little bit, a step above would be to create a little hook and then have that hook go through the eyelet in the, uh, in the switch. Again, over exaggeration. This is a little. This is too much wire. But basically, something like that. 
you can see how easy it is now to work with. So then you have wire on both sides of that terminal just to give it good connection. So if I was doing this for real, I'd probably actually cut back a little bit more. This is way too long of a hook. We don't need the insulation hanging out like that, but our heat shrink will help resolve you know, any potential shorting that would occur by exposing that. I'm gonna go a lot less. So really don't need much. And then give it a little bend. Get our switch. Boom. Then I like to crimp it in place just so it's not moving around on you. Again, hard to see when it's actually being done, but hopefully this gives you an idea of what the heck I'm doing. And then same thing here. I can't really use this vise, but um, I'll add some flux. onto our switch and wire. Since flux is our friend all over the place. And then how I would approach this is choose one side to have the iron on. So maybe I'll have it on this side and then introduce the solder on the other side. Actually what I'll do since I'm doing this one-handed I'm going to add some solder to my tip. And I'll hold taut. Wait till you see that solder connect to the switch. Looks pretty good. You can see we kind of have a cold solder joint right there. So I'm going to do a little bit more flux right there. Reflow it. So this was an example. I mean, obviously this is not perfect. It's not, you know, I would not send this to NASA, but if we wanted to check continuity to feel better about ourselves, it would give us continuity. And really, I guess for something like home game stuff, that's all we care about. So check. So one lead. There you go. And then you put your heat shrink tubing over this and then isolate this terminal so there's no possibility that these two could accidentally short against each other. Well, here goes nothing. Continuity. Now if we engage the switch. Well, there you go. And it looks like it's working. So if you have any questions or comments, please let me know below. I know it was a little scary to introduce soldering, but I promise you, you can do it. I'm a beginner. I've done basic soldering before, and it's very easy to take up. If you have questions or comments, please put them below. Hope the video was helpful. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. See you in the next one.